Welcome to Value-Based Care, Regulatory Environment. This is Lecture D. In this lecture, we will discuss the new legislation that incentivizes quality and discuss how these pieces fit together with what has gone on in the past. We will focus on the Merit-Based Incentive Program, or MIPS, for eligible clinicians, and Stage 3 of Meaningful Use for hospitals. The objectives for this lecture regulations to incentivize quality, are to discuss the components of the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, MIPS, discuss the criteria for Meaningful Use Stage 3 and how they incentivize quality, discuss how MIPS and Meaningful Use Stage 3 are aligned, discuss how advanced alternate payment models work, and describe health IT systems that facilitate meeting regulatory requirements. The variety of quality incentive programs administered by CMS has been a challenge to healthcare providers because the timelines, goals, and metrics were not aligned. As a result of MACRA, there is now an increased alignment of the various programs under the CMS Quality Payment Program, or QPP, which includes two pathways for rewarding quality and outcomes. One of the pathways to encourage high-quality performance among clinicians is the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS. Reporting for MIPS starts in 2017, and CMS will use the provider's 2017 performance to determine payments in 2019. This pattern of a two-year delay between reporting and payment will continue in subsequent years. MIPS consolidates and replaces three existing payment programs for physicians. The Physician Quality Reporting System that encourages providers to report on the quality of care provided to Medicare beneficiaries, the EHR Incentive Program for Eligible Professionals, and the Physician Value-Based Modifier that adjusts payments based on cost and quality performance. MIPS rewards eligible clinicians for their performance in four areas, quality, resource use or cost, clinical practice improvement, which CMS calls improvement activities, and use of certified EHR technology for advancing care information. Each of these areas will be weighted and combined into a composite performance score that will be used to determine payment. In the transition years of 2017 and 2018, there will not be a weighting for cost, and providers have some flexibility over this transition period as to how quickly they fully ramp up to the full criteria. Although there is flexibility during the transition year, eligible clinicians who do not participate will incur penalties. This flexibility includes how many of the areas they choose to meet, how many criteria within an area, and how long their reporting period will be. There will be a mechanism for public reporting of MIPS scores, and it is expected that by 2019, MIPS will be fully implemented. During this time, there will likely be both a ramp-up of requirements and some modifications in weights of the different MIPS components, as well as the reporting time periods. It is also possible that some of the specific requirements may get modified. A second incentive pathway is for providers who participate in what are called advanced alternative payment models, for example, accountable care organizations. Not all alternative payment models qualify as an advanced APM. An alternative payment model must meet three criteria to be eligible as an advanced APM, including quality reporting requirements, use of certified EHR technology, and strict financial risk conditions. Medical home models could be eligible as an APM, but they do not have to bear financial risk. If clinicians are participating in one of the advanced APM models and meet the qualifying participant criteria, they do not have to participate in MIPS and can be eligible for the additional lump sum bonus. This slide summarizes what we have discussed so far. Mandated by MACRA, Several quality programs for eligible Medicare clinicians were merged and aligned as part of CMS's quality payment program. Eligible clinicians have two pathways to receive incentives, participating in the merit-based incentive payment system or being part of an advanced alternative payment model. 
Both pathways require the use of certified electronic health record technology. Let's now go on to discussing the requirements connected with the Advancing Care Information part of MIPS. The Advancing Care Information objectives that are part of MIPS when it is fully implemented are almost the same as those currently required for Meaningful Use Stage 3, which we will discuss next and explain these objectives in more detail. Although the overall objectives are similar, the specific measures that are required for the base score for MIPS in 2017 are 1. Perform a security risk analysis. 2. Do e-prescribing. 3. Send summaries of care to other providers. 4. Request and be able to incorporate a summary of care from other providers. And 5. Provide patients access to their health information. If providers report on more measures than these five required ones, they can get additional payment. This is part of the plan that there will be some flexibility for the first few years on requirements and that the requirements will ramp up to full implementation over the next few years. Thus, although meaningful use per se is going away for clinicians, many of the Stage 3 meaningful use criteria have been incorporated into MIPS. Over time, it is possible that MIPS may also be an option for physicians who treat primarily Medicaid patients. For providers who treat both types of patients, setting up the infrastructure for either Stage 3 or MIPS will be similar. While MIPS is designed for Medicare-eligible clinicians beginning in 2017, Stage 3 of meaningful use remains a requirement for hospitals and Medicaid-eligible professionals who seek to continue to collect Medicaid incentive payments. Stage 3 of meaningful use, like MIPS, requires the use of certified EHR technology. Also, the objectives for the MIPS category of advancing care information when MIPS is fully implemented are equivalent to those in Stage 3. But Stage 3 currently has two additional objectives that MIPS does not have. In November 2016, CMS announced that beginning in 2017, they will delete these objectives. It is likely that there will continue to be modifications in both Stage 3 Meaningful Use and MIPS, and they are likely to be more aligned in the future. Let's now look at the criteria for Stage 3. The screen shows the Meaningful Use Stage 3 objectives as of October 2016, including the last two that are planned to be eliminated and that are not part of MIPS. We will now discuss the objectives and some of the measures that indicate performance. Protected Health Information, or PHI, must be kept secure and a security risk analysis must be conducted. This objective is also included in MIPS. In terms of electronic prescribing, in a hospital setting using an EHR, in-hospital electronic prescriptions would naturally be part of the CPOE process, which, as we said, is now becoming routinely used. What must be reported on for Stage 3 is e-prescribing for discharge prescriptions, where the physician sends the medication prescription to the patient's preferred pharmacy. Providing patient access to health information includes providing patients access to their own health information, as well as providing electronic patient education. For MIPS, the patient education measure is not required in 2017, although with full implementation, it will be. Coordinating care through patient engagement includes providing patients with the ability to view, download, and transmit their own health information. It also includes the capability for secure messaging between patient and provider and allowing the collection of patient-generated health data. This whole Stage 3 objective is not part of the basic 2017 requirements for MIPS. Health Information Exchange has several measures. Both MIPS and Stage 3 requires sending summary information about a patient to another provider and receiving and incorporating a patient summary into their own EHR. Again, if both providers are within the same hospital or health system, 
they would have access to the Enterprise EHR, and that information would naturally be available. The requirement for Stage 3 and MIPS, though, is to be able to send and receive and incorporate health information from those outside their own system. The Health Information Exchange objective also includes clinical information reconciliation. Most healthcare providers have recognized the need for medication reconciliation during transitions of care, but there may be needs for other information reconciliation as well. The MIPS criteria for health information exchange for 2017 do not include the clinical information measure. Public health reporting includes five different measures related to reporting data electronically to immunization, public health, and other data registries. None of those are required in 2017 for MIPS, but if providers do report on these, they can get a 5% bonus. Although Stage 3 still included use of Computerized Provider Order Entry, or CPOE, and Clinical Decision Support at the time that the MIPS final rule came out in October 2016, these objectives are not required for MIPS. However, as we said, in November 2016, CMS announced plans to eliminate these objectives from Stage 3 Meaningful Use beginning in 2017. This may seem strange since these features have been part of meaningful use from the beginning, but their elimination is actually a measure of their success, not their failure. They were eliminated from MIPS because they were what is called topped out, meaning almost everyone had incorporated them into routine care and it was not necessary to make providers go through the extra burden of reporting on their use. In addition, Eliminating them would further align Stage 3 of Meaningful Use with the Advancing Care Information Objectives of MIPS. Even if they are eliminated, it must be remembered that these features are still very necessary to meet the quality goals of Stage 3 and MIPS. Certified Electronic Health Record Technology, which is required for all incentive programs, includes CPOE and Clinical Decision Support capabilities. In addition, CPOE is needed for e-prescribing. In addition, clinical decision support can be helpful in addressing cost and quality issues for all the value-based care programs. The Stage 3 Meaningful Use and the Advancing Care Information Criteria specify certain types of technology and purposes for which the technology must be used. However, there may be other types of health IT that will be needed to meet the requirements of these new federal initiatives. The aim of MACRA, including the criteria for MIPS and APMs, as well as Meaningful Use Stage 3, is to promote care where quality is optimized and costs are minimized. An EHR, even without specialized features, can promote quality and safety by making sure that a patient's information is legible and accessible. With the added features of CPOE and clinical decision support, an EHR can prevent adverse events, provide reminders related to quality metrics, and promote the use of lower-cost medications. In addition, using the EHR for electronic reporting of quality metrics provides added incentives. Care coordination is essential for several of the advanced alternative payment models, but is needed more generally for improved quality and safety. Care coordination will require not just an EHR, but also health information exchange, both within and outside a given organization, which is why HIE is such an important part of both Stage 3 Meaningful Use as well as MIPS. Increasing patient engagement is an important part of clinical practice improvement activities, which is one of the other focal areas for MIPS. In addition, as MIPS ramps up, like the Stage 3 current objective, it will be required. Efforts to engage patients can benefit from making it easy for patients to access their information, which is a requirement of both MIPS and Stage 3 meaningful use. A patient portal can facilitate such access and can also foster physician-patient communication, display trends in patient data over time so patients can engage in self-monitoring, and may be able to improve medication adherence by making it easier for patients to request medication refills.
All of these legislative initiatives require monitoring of both quality and cost. Again, while an EHR is capturing data related to the process of care, cost data are often in a separate system. In addition, the transaction-based systems, such as an EHR or billing system, make it difficult to aggregate the data for analysis. A data warehouse that is designed to facilitate analytical queries and aggregate data analyses is essential, especially when the data that need to be aggregated come from multiple entities within a patient-centered medical home or accountable care organization. Population health tools, including internal registries, may also be helpful in monitoring patients with chronic diseases, since patients with these conditions are often the most vulnerable and incur the highest costs. To manage the health of the population and to set benchmarks for quality and cost for the advanced alternative payment models, obtaining patient profiles and performing risk adjustment and predictive modeling are necessary. Business intelligence and other health data analytic tools, as well as personnel experienced in these areas, will be needed. Finally, one way for an organization to manage providers' performance on the required metrics is to provide the performance data internally to both providers and administrators. Dashboards with individual and group performance metrics can provide feedback to providers helping them to improve their practice and can help administrators manage both quality and the costs incurred. This concludes Lecture D of Regulatory Environment. In this lecture, we described how CMS has operationalized some of the mandates of the MACRA legislation that was passed in 2015. We describe the mechanisms available to take advantage of new incentive programs developed as part of the Quality Payment Program of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. These mechanisms include the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System and the incentives available for eligible clinicians who practice in advanced alternative payment models. We also describe the criteria that hospitals need to meet to qualify for incentives under Meaningful Use Stage 3. Finally, this lecture described the crucial role that health IT will play in meeting the goals for value-based care that are incorporated into all of these regulatory requirements.